Hi there, Mr. Sutton here bringing you the AB Calculus 4-2 Extra Practice Number 2 Solutions on Increasing and Decreasing Intervals. On this problem, we're trying to figure out where this function is increasing and decreasing. So to do this, we need to take the derivative. Uh, before I do that, though, I'm going to make it a little bit easier because right now I'm looking at a quotient rule, but I don't need to do that. So let me split this up. I'm going to divide each of these terms by x cubed and express it as a negative exponent. So I'm going to have negative x squared over x cubed. That's going to be negative x to the negative 1 power. Then negative negative gives me positive 1 over x cubed. So I'm doing plus x to the negative third. And now using just the power rule to take this derivative, I've got positive x to the negative 2 minus 3x to the negative 4. So although I did take this out of fraction form to take the derivative, if I actually want to set this equal to 0 and solve, I think it's going to be easier if it's back in fraction form. So let me rewrite this as 1 over x squared minus 3 over x to the fourth. And then getting a common denominator, that would be x to the fourth. So if I make this x squared over x to the fourth, then I'm in business. And I'll just write this as x squared minus 3 over x to the fourth. And now I will set this equal to 0 and solve. So I see that this is going to equal 0 if my numerator equals 0, which happens at, let's see, add 3 square root, so plus or minus 3. That'll 0 this thing out. But also, this function is undefined dne at x equals 0. So those both count as critical values that I have to test around when I'm doing my sign analysis. All right, let me set up a f prime number line here. So I've got critical values at negative radical 3, 0, and positive radical 3. And let me test something in each of these intervals. So to the far left here, I'm going to try out negative 2. That's a little bit less than negative radical 3. Uh, negative radical 8 would be equal to negative 2, in case you were unsure about whether or not this was far enough. And so what am I going to plug that into? Well, I'm just going to use this fraction version of the uh, derivative here. I think that'll be the easiest to do sign analysis on, because my denominator here, if you look at this x to the fourth, since that's an even power, that is always going to be positive. So all I really need to figure out is whether the numerator is positive or negative. So if I plug in negative 2 to x squared minus 3, that's going to give me 4 minus 3, which is positive. And now something between negative radical 3 and 0, let's try out negative 1. Negative 1 squared minus 3 is going to be negative. And if you have between 0 and radical 3, positive 1, positive 1 squared minus 3, still negative. And then finally, let's try positive 2 over here. Uh, that's going to come out positive for my numerator, so positive for the whole thing. All right, so taking a look at what my signs are doing, it appears I am increasing on the interval from negative infinity to negative radical 3 because that's where f prime is positive, and also increasing on the interval from radical 3 to positive infinity. And then for decreasing, that's going to be negative radical 3 to 0, union 0 to positive radical 3. Now, you can't really include 0 in this interval. Sometimes you can, uh, but 0 is undefined in the original function. So you, you wouldn't be able to include this even if you wanted to, and you were allowing for including endpoints in increasing and decreasing intervals. It's parentheses or nothing there. On this problem, they want us to find intervals where this parabola is increasing and decreasing. Now, this can be done without calculus, but here's the uh, calculus approach to this which is to find the derivative, set it equal to 0, and do sign analysis. So my derivative is going to be 2x plus 6, just using the power rule there. And setting that equal to 0 and solving, if we subtract 6 and divide by 2, that's going to be negative 3. So let me set up an f prime number line with negative 3 as a critical value. Something to the left of negative 3 I can test. How about negative 4? 2 times negative 4 plus 6 comes out negative. And something to the right of negative 3, yeah, let's be lazy and test 0. So that's going to just be 6 if I plug it into f prime, and that gives me just a positive. So now I see based on the signs here, since f prime is positive over here, we can say that f is increasing from negative 3 to positive infinity. And since f prime is negative over here, we can say that f is decreasing from negative infinity to negative 3. 
On this one, we're trying to figure out where this polynomial is increasing and decreasing. So I'm going to start by doing some sign analysis uh, after finding critical values. So for my uh, derivative to start getting those critical values, I've got negative 3x squared plus 8x. And now let me set that to e equal to 0 and find critical values from that. I can factor a negative x out of this, leaving me with 3x minus 8. So my x values, my critical values, are going to be 0 and adding 8 and dividing by 3, 8 thirds. So let me put those on an f prime number line. We've got 0 and 8 thirds. And now let me test around those. So something to the left of 0, let's try negative 1. That's an easy one. So plugging that into negative x, that becomes positive. And then, let's see, in here, that's going to give us a negative. So positive times a negative is a negative. Next, between 0 and 8 thirds, I'm going to test 1. So that's going to be a negative times another negative, giving me a positive. And something bigger than 8 thirds, I'm going to try 3. So that's going to be a negative and a positive, giving me a negative. All right, so taking a look at our intervals, since f prime is positive in the middle here, we can say f is increasing from 0 to 8 thirds. And then since f prime is negative everywhere else, we can say that f is decreasing from negative infinity comma 0 union 8 thirds comma positive infinity. On this one, I'm trying to figure out where negative sine of x is increasing and decreasing on the interval from negative to positive pi, because otherwise there's an infinite number of uh, intervals you could list. So let's start by uh, taking the derivative and getting some critical values. So we've got negative cosine of x for that derivative. And setting that equal to 0 and solving for all values between negative and positive pi. Well, cosine is going to be equal to 0 whenever you're on the y-axis. So that's going to be negative and positive pi over 2. So negative and positive 90 degrees, basically. So let's set up a number line now. We've got endpoints at negative and positive pi, and this is an f prime number line. And the only critical values in here are at negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Testing out some values in each of these intervals now, and we're plugging these into this negative cosine of function right here. So careful, make sure you use that one. So between negative pi and negative pi over 2, you're basically in the third quadrant. So plug in any third quadrant angle. A cosine by itself is negative in the third quadrant, but we have a negative out in front, so that makes this a positive quantity. Next, between negative and positive pi over 2, well, I'm going to be lazy and plug in 0. It's definitely in there. So we know that cosine of 0 is 1, so that becomes a negative. And then over here, between pi over 2 and pi, that is quadrant 2. So any quadrant 2 angle is going to make cosine by itself negative, but again, we have the negative out in front, so that switches to positive. Going by these intervals now, we can say that we are increasing, since we have a positive f prime, on the interval from negative pi to negative pi over 2, union pi over 2 to positive pi. And we could certainly list other ones, but they only wanted between negative and positive pi for this problem. And then for decreasing, well, f prime is negative between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, so we can say f is decreasing on that interval. To find increasing and decreasing intervals for this function, we'll start by taking the derivative and finding critical values. So I have 4x cubed minus 4x, and we're going to set that equal to 0 now and solve for those critical values. I can factor a 4x out of everything, leaving me with x squared minus 1. And then we see that x is going to, all this is going to equal 0 if x is 0 or plus or minus 1. So those are my three critical values that we have to test around now. We're going to do some sign analysis. Here is a uh, f prime number line. We've got negative 1, 0, and 1 as our critical values. And now I'm going to plug candidates from each of these uh, intervals here into this f prime. I'll use the factored version here. All right, so let's try something to the far left, like negative 2. So that's going to give us a negative out here and a positive inside the parentheses if I plug in negative 2. So that's going to be negative overall. Plugging in something now between negative 1 and 0, how about negative 1 half? So that's going to give us a negative out here 
Inside, we're also going to get a negative, so that's going to be positive overall. And now something between 0 and 1, like positive 1 half. Well, now we get a positive and a negative, giving us a negative overall result. And something bigger than 1, how about 2 or a million, whatever you want. Uh, so that's a positive times a positive, which is positive. So because f prime is positive on the second and the fourth intervals here, we can say f is increasing from negative 1 to 0, union 1 to infinity. And then because f prime is negative on the first and third intervals, we have f decreasing on negative infinity to negative 1, union 0 to 1. For this one, we're trying to figure out where 1 over x cubed is increasing and decreasing. So let's start by rewriting this as x to the negative third power, because to figure out this question, I need to know the derivative of this and what the behavior of that derivative is. So using the power rule on this, we've got negative 3x to the negative 4. And I'm now going to find critical values of this thing, setting it equal to 0 and all the rest of that. I'm going to rewrite this first. We'll have this as negative 3 over x to the 4th. And now setting that equal to 0 to solve for critical values, I realize that I can't actually make this thing equal 0 because the numerator is a constant. And if you can't zero out the numerator of a fraction, you're never going to get 0 out of that fraction. So this does not equal 0. However, this is does not exist, a DNE, if x has a value of 0. So that at least gives us one critical value on which we can test some a test around here. So here's my number line, f prime number line, critical value at 0. Let's test something to the left of that, like negative 1. Plugging that in here, or here, wherever you want to plug it in, uh, negative 1 to the 4th becomes positive, um, but then that whole fraction becomes negative, so negative overall result. And if I plug in positive 1, I'm not going to get any different result because uh, we still get a positive positive that becomes negative with this negative out in front. So negative on both intervals. So taking a look, because f prime is not positive anywhere, we would say that f is increasing nowhere. Now that doesn't mean that f is decreasing everywhere. Uh, f is decreasing from negative infinity to 0, union 0 to infinity. We cannot include 0 because the function is not defined at 0. If it were defined at 0, then you could make an argument for negative infinity to infinity, depending on your philosophy of these uh, places where the derivative has uh, critical values. Um, but in this case, there's no argument about this. We have to leave 0 out. For this one, we're going to do a little analysis on this crazy radical looking function, and we're going to figure out where it's increasing or decreasing. To know that, we need to know a little bit more about the derivative, specifically what the sign of the derivative is doing and critical values and all that. So I need to take a derivative before anything else happens. Let me rewrite this as x times 16 minus x squared quantity to the 1 half, just to make my differentiating a little bit easier. And now for this, I'm going to need a product rule along with a chain rule. So here's my box and ribbon to organize that. I've got factors of x and 16 minus x squared to the 1 half. Derivatives of those are going to be 1. And this thing, we've got something to the half power. That derivative is going to be 1 half something to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the something, so times negative 2x. And at this point, let me go through and multiply all this out using the ribbon. So I've got 1 times this stuff, which I'm going to write as, I'm back in radical form, radical 16 minus x squared. And I'm doing that because I'm about to find critical values by solving an equation with this stuff in it. That's going to be a lot easier if I'm dealing with just radical forms and fractions than if I've, I have these weird exponents. All right, now going the other way on the ribbon, we have uh, an x times negative 2x in the numerator. Uh, that's going to be a negative 2x squared. We have a 2 and a radical 16 minus x squared in the denominator. And you could cancel out those 2s. Let's see if I did. So, yep, looks like I did. These 2s are canceling. So we just have a negative x squared up top then. And then down below we have the square root of 16 minus x squared. Now, if we want to set this equal to 0 and solve, it's going to be a lot easier if there's a single fraction. So to merge these together, I need a common denominator. That's going to be radical 16 minus x squared. If I multiply this expression by radical 16 minus x squared over itself, I get just plain old 16 minus x squared. And now I can move that in with this 
uh, minus x squared up here. And this is really going to be 16 minus 2x squared over uh, radical 16 minus x squared. So let me set this equal to 0 and solve. So there's uh, something I can do with this numerator here. If I do 16 minus 2x squared equals 0, I can actually take a 2 out of all that. So that's going to be 8 minus x squared equals 0. And then I see here that this whole thing equals 0 if x equals either positive or negative radical 8. So those are two critical values I can test around. But there might be more because we're dealing with a fraction. And fractions, if you plug 0 into the denominator, that would also cause some issues. So what's going to make the denominator 0? Well, if I plug in 4 or negative 4, that gives me division by 0. So those could be considered critical values. But here's the deal. Um, it's, it, it goes a little bit further than this. Because if you plug in a number bigger than 4, like 5, 16 minus 25 is going to give you the square root of a negative in here. And we can't have that. So I can't plug in anything bigger than positive 4. And I really can't plug in anything that's less than negative 4 either. So really, this whole thing does not exist if x is either less than or equal to negative 4 or greater than or equal to positive 4. So I have to factor that in when I'm doing my sign analysis and make sure that I don't try testing anything on those intervals. So at the end of the day, for my number line, I've got, uh, so this is my f prime number line, I've got endpoints at negative and positive 4. I have to stay within there. And then I have critical values at negative radical 8 and, oops, there we go, positive radical 8, which I can call 2 radical 2 if I want to just simplify the radical a little bit. Okay, so what can I test in each of these intervals? Well, negative radical 8 is a little bit to the right of negative radical 9, or negative 3. So we're going to test out negative 3, and we're going to use this uh, fraction form here. Now the good news is this square root term down here, this is guaranteed to be positive, because I'm plugging in things that are positive inside, and square root's only going to return positives and possibly 0, but I'm not going to plug in anything that gives me 0. So I don't have to worry about the denominator when doing sign analysis. It's all about the numerator, um, which I already factored right here. Um, so really, it just comes down to this 8 minus x squared part. This determines whether the whole thing is positive or negative. The fate of the universe rests on the shoulders of this little parentheses. So if I plug negative 3 in, I've basically got 8 minus 9, which comes out negative. Now if I plug in a number in here, like 0, uh, 8 minus 0 is a positive. And let's plug in positive 3 while we're at it. 8 minus 9 again comes out negative. So based off of this, since I have a positive f prime in here in the middle, I can say that we are increasing from negative 2 radical 2 to positive 2 radical 2. And since we have f prime being negative in these other two intervals, we can say f is decreasing from negative 4 comma negative 2 radical 2 union 2 radical 2 comma positive 4.